Welcome to the Thrive TV Show with Lauren Parsons, helping you boost your health, energy, and productivity. Hi there, and welcome to the Thrive TV Show. My name is Lauren Parsons, Wellbeing Specialist, and today I am joined by one of the greats in the fitness profession, Mr. Ian O'Dwyer. Welcome, Ian. Hello, Lauren. How are you doing? Hey, it's so good to have you with me. So today we're talking about stress and how it shows up in our tissue. This is going to be such a great episode because we're going to look at what to listen and look for in your body, what to do when you identify stress or those things in your body, and how to manage it effectively. So I know Ian's got so much wisdom to share with us. Before we dive into all of that goodness, however, we're going to go through our this and that questions. So Ian, are you ready for a quick fire round? Right, don't make it too complicated for me. Okay, all right. Well, we'll start with the big one. Spots or stripes? Spots. Spots, okay, nice. Uh, walk a dog or rock a baby? Ride a horse. Oh, ride a horse. I love it. Yes, that's you. You're a great horseman. Uh, red or green apples? Red. Red, nice. Singing or dancing? Dancing. Nice. Popular pre-made travel tour or build your own itinerary from scratch? Build your own itinerary. Yeah, nice. Adventure. Good, good. Photograph or painting? Painting. Painting. Smoothie or ice cream? Smoothie. Yeah, I need to say that. And working partner or stay-at-home partner? It's a really good question. Um, my wife now is a working partner and we've always been working, so I don't know anything, anything different. So I would say working. Yeah, awesome. And lastly, surf or ski? I'm not a surfer um, and I'm not really a skier. I would say a runner. Okay, nice. I like it how you just change it up. Yep, horses, running, beautiful. Excellent. So Ian O'Dwyer give a guide's clients to optimal performance, identifying positive mindset and movement patterns. He coaches the human being, not just the human body. And this is what we're going to learn about today. Ian has accumulated over 25 years experience in the wellness industry and is considered one of the elders, focusing on strong global relationships and collaboration. He has done a whole ton of things you can read in the notes below. He's co-founded both SOMA and PTA Global. He's been a global presenter all around the world and a mentor and author and mentored hundreds of other trainers. His experience and results allows him to help clients across the spectrum of pain and dysfunction, right from the sedentary through to the chronic and the elite. So thanks so much for sharing your wisdom today, Ian. Tell me, how is it that you got started doing what you're doing now and what do you love about it? Certainly the start was possibly non-conventional to what most people do. It was more I was driven into the industry because I had so many injuries. I was a mad sports person and along that journey, the way we conditioned and the way we prepared the tissues of the human being were vastly different to what they really needed. So I was accumulating many, many injuries over the years. And when I finished my sport, the appetite to understand the body better or the being better drove me into the industry. So it was really a, a selfish, I suppose, want to, to understand how we could actually help people move, feel and live better. Because realistically, the way we've done it for the last 20 or 30 or 40 years, it's not wrong, but it's maybe just not complete. Nice. I love it. Move, feel, and live better. Fantastic. And so what are you seeing as the most common challenges that people are presenting with today? The reason that SOMA has come about between Rodney and myself is we've worked together for many, many years. And, and it's interesting. It's those conversations, Lauren, that you have when you're on the road. And, and, and it's the observations that you make of the people from a professional level not just as a client, that you're starting to see things appear more regularly. And for us, it was more pain. For us, it was more inflammation. For us, it was more quality of life that people wanted from a professional perspective. So the conversation for Rodney and I was, okay, wow, we've got coaches and trainers who are looking after people, but they're not looking after themselves. That doesn't really make sense. So... You know, as we started to delve deeper, what we were seeing was that probably the biggest thing about what we don't do is we don't really take notice of what our tissues do. And we get caught in this bias. And our industry is very 
bias to using words and trends that, that tends to sell things to people. You know, once upon a time it was functional movement, once upon a time it was fascia, once upon a time it was high intensity interval training, all these sorts of things. Where realistically, before we can do any of that is we've got to understand what are your tissues now telling you about the environment that you're in and the stresses that you are taking on. And if we have the humility to listen to those tissues and feel what the body wants, not just tell it, but feel it, then nine times out of 10, you'll actually have a quality of life. You'll have an ability to move and you'll have a much happier and healthier human being. Wow. And so what do you think, what are the things that you recommend people should look for? You know, say every day, busy working mum, busy working dad, what are the sort of things that people should be looking for in their bodies, in their tissue? Beautiful. What a great question. And it's interesting because my question back to you would be, well, when do we want to start looking? Because the biggest thing about it, Lauren, is that people sort of get up and they get their breakfast and they get rolling to work. And, and it's not till probably lunchtime that they start to get inquisitive about, wow, I wonder how my body's really feeling today. I feel a bit flat. I might have a coffee. You mm-hmm. know, the very first thing I do, the very first thing I do when I wake up is go, wow, what was that sleep like? Do I feel rested? Or do I still feel a bit sort of jaded? Because mm-hmm. that's the very first awareness of how our tissues are going to respond to whatever I do today. Because if I haven't rested well, if I haven't slept well, if I haven't recovered well, then there's going to be some sort of knock-on effect during the day with my energy, with my immune system, with my ability to be able to move, my ability to be able to maybe even breathe. More importantly, my ability to be able to communicate or listen. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to check in just to see what my sleep pattern was like last night. And then we'll start to get an awareness of when I start to move, where I'm probably not moving well from. So, you know, people say to me all the time, I get out of bed and gosh, my feet feel like they're 90 years old. I don't really want to move. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it because we don't move much in bed and we certainly don't hydrate much in bed. So... Mm -hmm. Again, rather than judging that, it's really a matter of the body's telling you something. So what could I do to start to get those tissues to maybe feel a little bit better? I could do some really, really subtle circular motions with my feet, both left and right. In 30 to 40 seconds, you're going to start to notice that the tissue will change. And I I feel for me, what's really exciting now about what we're doing with Soma is that once upon a time, Lauren, we weren't told the tissue changed instantly. Mm-hmm. We, would, we had to do this rehabilitatory program and it would take X amount of weeks or you have to do this and it'll take X amount of weeks. And I'm not saying all tissue changes permanently, instantly, but you'll get an, an instant change in tissue. Now, it will give you feedback from the stimulus of what you're doing into your heart and your, and your gut and your brain. It'll give you feedback of whether that was a positive outcome or a negative outcome. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is, once again, just listening to it. So, uh, you know, we get a build-up of stress. We're lying in bed overnight. We wake up feeling stiff and sore. What are the sorts of things that you recommend people do? Obviously, start to be aware of how they're feeling, and then what do they do about it? Awareness. second thing I want to do is I want to throw some water in my system. I want to hydrate myself. You know, we've got, we don't take a lot of water to hydrate the fascial system. We know it's a really, really smart system and it's obviously nebulous throughout the entirety of the body. But it's more the blood system and the lymphatic system that we really have to take awareness of. We want to flush the stuff that's been in our body from the night previously. So in other words, you know, the, the body heals for four hours physically and then it heals emotionally. It doesn't matter what it's healing, there's always going to be waste products or toxins that we have to get rid of. So, you know, to be aware, to feel how you've slept, then to get up and move a little bit and then get some hydration into your system. That's, for me, vital and that really sets the, the tissues off to start the day in a great, great positive outcome. Mm-hmm. This is, I love this affirmation because as part of my morning routine, the first thing I do is get up, put on uplifting music and just do a movement routine. And, and I think I perhaps intuitively do what you're talking about in terms of the assessment because some days I'll feel really strong and really want to do something quite active. And probably the majority of days at the moment, being winter right now, I'll just do quite a relaxing routine. There'll be a lot of static holes. There'll be a lot of just relaxing into positions 
and just yeah just trying to stretch doing a lot of lateral stretching and just yeah doing things that I feel are going to just restore me and just give me a moment of calm and peace before I head into the day so is that the sort of thing you're recommending it certainly is I'm a I'm a real in my experience you know with, with everything I've had over the years the one thing I've learned is that the body thrives and craves motion Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, when we look at it, our body is never still. Even when we're asleep, there's always breath in and out of our body. There's always tissues that have to move and slide and glide. So absolutely, I love to be able to get up and move in the morning in a manner in which the body's not being pushed outside its threshold. It's quite happy. Mm-hmm. It's quite normal. But at the same time, depending upon what type of tissue you have and what you're trying to do to that tissue, that motion now really is a great way of hydrating and lubricating the necessary tissues to allow them not only to move, but to communicate better. And that's Mm -hmm. the real thing for me. If we can get everything on the same page, everyone's talking to each other, then all of a sudden the movement now creates a real positive change to how you feel, which then changes really positively into the decisions you make. And that's, that's a huge factor for us is you know with the amount of anxiety depression and the Mm -hmm. amount of mind syndromes and diseases that are starting to happen now it's critical that we get the hydration we get that peacefulness we get the breath we get that gentle movement just to allow everything now to start to get back into sync Mm -hmm. do you have any stories about people that have started to put this into their lives put in this hydration this movement any perhaps clients that you've had recently or over the years can you share some examples of what a difference it's made for people i had a a lady recently who actually she lived in new zealand for a number of years her her father was quite famous over there and she she came in and she was um she's 35 three years ago she started on ivf Uh, very busy person uh, three weeks into a pregnancy, she was paralysed from the neck down. Wow. So the biggest fear was, is she going to have a child? Is she going to be able to, is she going to live? If, if everything goes right, how is she going to survive? Long story short, she came to saw, and saw me about probably six months ago now. And interest, interestingly enough, she, she's come out of the paralysis, but she's still got part paralysis in, in parts of her body. Now, what was interesting was, after the first couple of sessions and we got into it, Lauren, the thing was, I said to her, what do you do for a living? Because she was quite an astute person. She said, I'm a, I'm a doctor of neuroscience. Wow. Now, here's a person who knows the brain better than most. She had a PhD at the age of 24, incredibly intelligent. And it was interesting because she asked me what I could do. Now, what I basically did in our very first session was touch her foot and move her ankle and that changed a huge amount of things in her body. And that was a big, wow, what have you just done type question from, from her. And then into the next session, what we did is we started to add some whole body vibration to a system. Now, this is something from a neuroscience perspective that we know that it works, but from a neuroscience perspective, do they actually research this sort of stuff? Not enough. But the change that she got, and we would just go back into patterns and I would hold certain positions because the plate would do the work for us. The change we got in her movement, the change we got in her emotion, the change we got in her tissue growth, more importantly, the inquisitive nature. So it upregulated the brain as well. The inquisitive nature that it started to birth was incredible. So that's a that's a really to the you know at the end of the spectrum type client but it just shows you that no matter what happens no matter what we do no matter how far down the spectrum or across the spectrum people can be and how you know it looks like you've got no hope we don't know because we don't know enough about the body but if we can give some really simple things like movement and hydration and rest and and love and appreciation then it's interesting to see how those tissues can change around and then how they can perform and start to heal themselves. And it was really, really cool. I had another guy actually uh, in Dunedin went on the, on the road show, Lauren, and it was quite funny. Mm-hmm. Big guy, 6'6", 120 kgs, in great condition. Um, and his patellas are basically around the side of his knees. And, and, you know, our industry wants to go down there and cut things and shift things and put them in different positions. And, and just after a conversation... We actually, when I got back here in Tanusa, um, I did a Skype with him and I got a ball and we did, you know, a Soma technique with, with, with his, um, 
in his lower leg and his upper leg and then we got him to move a little bit really gently in a pattern that he that he recognized just to sit and reach the change in his movement was phenomenal mm -hmm. now the biggest thing about that lauren is that it was one simple technique with a ball it was one simple technique with a movement but the hope it's now given him the fear that it's taken away the quality of life now that possibly we can actually improve which wasn't there before that's yes. what i love what we do yeah, and I, I love how, you know, motion leads to our emotions and the, uh, the possibility that we have when we move our bodies to experience more positive emotions. And, you know, we, we are facing almost an, a depression and anxiety epidemic and it's just increasing with the rate of change in technology and social media and all of these things. And it's amazing the power, I think, coming back to that, starting your day or perhaps throughout your day, adding in movement. Now, you know that one of my key philosophies is to snack on exercise throughout the day rather than treating it as, hey, I've got to, you know, go and do my workout now and tick it off my list and keep it separate. What are your thoughts around that and how that relates to stress in the body? If we can move regularly throughout the day, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I have a saying, change your language, change your outcome. You know, it, it, we talk about exercises and we talk about movements and we talk about them as though they're a chore when realistically everything we do is about movement and if we can just get into a pattern now of you know every 90 minutes we stand up and we do something i don't care whether it's shaking your hips but we stand up and do something different to what we've been doing then all of a sudden we'll get that change in the tissue that i'm talking about so i think snacking on exercise snacking on movement is incredibly important and on a movement that you enjoy, not on a movement that you have to do because it's going to do this. Because once again, if I'm doing something, Lauren, because it's going to make me feel better, then I'm not really connecting to that motion or to that movement. So therefore, if I'm not connecting to it, how can I feel it? If I can't feel it, why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we as coaches have to get better at not telling people that this is going to activate your glutes or make your hamstrings more flexible. We need to guide clients into challenges so that they can actually start to feel for themselves what that movement or that motion is going to do because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it doesn't matter what we see it doesn't matter what we know it matters what the client feels and once they can feel something now you empower them to take it on you are now giving them permission to actually live that quality of life Mm -hmm. And I know that you do a lot of work with play and games and just getting people having fun and moving and almost not realising that they're exercising because I know it's controversial and when I, I label this, you know, the whole snack on exercise movement, so I don't know whether to include that word exercise or not, but I have purposely put it in there because it's about shifting paradigms because really what we want to do is get people moving and moving in ways that they love, as you said, because we know that if we inherently enjoy the activity, we're going to have this intrinsic motivation to want to keep doing it because we just love it not just because we want some sort of aesthetic result at the end which is very minimal in, in terms of the whole benefits that we can gain so if we've got people that are listening in today that are going okay i can feel stress and tension in my body let's say you know i can feel it through my neck and shoulders and what is it that you'd say to them as some small things that they can do as practical ideas day to day very first thing is don't stress about being stressed because the body right. the tissue need stress, right? The tissues need stress so that it can produce various types of hormonal responses in the body that will drive us in positive states. It's just when we have too much or we have excess stress and we don't get the recovery time to be able to allow the tissues to heal. So if, you know, if we've got people who are sitting a lot, stand. And I don't mean stand and stay standing. I just mean stand up and move a little bit for a minute. If you've got mm -hmm. someone who's got neck tension, just try breathing and breathing abdominally because what that will do is decrease the sympathetic nervous system and allow the tissues now to relax. Get some water into your system. Make sure, and it's always harder in the colder months, to drink. Once again, it's, it's really important to drink and move because what that does is once you have a drink and if you do a little bit of movement, it now starts to allow the fascial tissue to grab the water molecules and it hydrates the fascial follicles. So that's really, really important. So, you know, the, the, smallest, the smallest thing will make the biggest change. It's not about having to go out and do 10 flights of stairs. It's not about having to go out and lift heavy dumbbells all the time. Trust me, we all need that sort of stuff. But it's the little things that we'll do during 
the day that if we're aware of what our tissues are asking for, that will make a massive change and provide a far better quality of life as you go through your process. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's the smallest things that will have the biggest change. I've just written that down in quote marks because that's brilliant. And I think that's so true and it's so doable when we break things down into those small amounts through the day. We can't store this kind of thing up. It's not like you can catch up on the weekend and try and overdose on movement and hydration. It's small and often. And what I forgot to say is in my morning routine, I actually drink, I have a full cup of hot water and I drink half of it before I move and then the other half after. So I don't know if you approve of that, but you know, people have got to do it in a way that works for them. But it's fitting these small movements in. And for me, it's about making it an integral and uplifting part of your day rather than seeing it as a whole separate thing. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So any other key strategies that you would say for people listening in, if they're not sure how to get started, you know, what is, what is your key advice around this? Firstly is review what has brought happiness into your life. Go back over your life story and look at what actually has made you happy over the years. For instance, you know, as we joked about at the start of, of this chat, horses have been a huge part in my life. So anything that's leather, because you know, we used to hand sew our saddles, hand sew our bridles, hand sew our, our head stalls. Um, I played Aussie Rules, once again, leather. So the smell of leather really for me is something that I enjoy. So mm -hmm. if, if I come to doing something that I want to do i want to make sure that it has an emotional attachment to something so cracking a stock whip for me is something i love not because of the noise it makes because of the fact that of how it feels and how it smells so find something that you're going to do that's going to allow you to connect to a period in life that you were happy in that's really important and i feel <laughs> well, and i feel what happens a lot of times in life now is we forget our past we forget what has made us and created us the person we are today you know, for me, sport was a huge part of my life and, and hence if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be in the area I am now. But I, I feel that we have too many things that people get told to do because they're fads and there's things that they actually could be doing, they want to be doing, they enjoy doing, but they don't get permission to do. So the very first thing is find something you enjoy and do it. And don't wow. judge. Don't judge how you move. Don't judge how long you do it. Don't judge... That, you know, you might, you might enjoy walking upstairs because you were, a, you know, a hill runner years ago and you might go, well, the first flight of stairs I walked up, and, my gosh, my, heart, my heart's just racing. It doesn't matter. You've started something now and it's brought back an enjoyment and it's created an awareness. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's that whole process, isn't it? It's, it's pretty simple. It's not rocket science, but it really, really works. Absolutely. I love that idea of anchoring it with something that you remember as a smell because that's, you know, that's a sense of smell is one of those key ways that we have bring back memories in the past, isn't it? You know, we, we smell something that does, it just brings back memories. So if we can associate positive emotions with that. I know studies have also been done that if you think positive thoughts while you're doing a new habit that you want to adopt, your, your, your brain can't tell the difference between you leading that process and that just being something that naturally evolves. So let's say you want to eat more salads. Every time you eat a salad, think of something that brings you lots of happiness and joy. And after a while, you'll start going, oh, I associate salads with happiness and joy. I crave more salads. So you know, linking movement, thinking, wow, I feel so alive, so strong, so supple, so centered, so connected, so present right now, whatever the words are for you that you create those emotional connections while you're doing it. So you're going to actually become addicted to moving more and make it part of your lifestyle. And Lauren, I feel that because we talk about the conscious, mm -hmm. the reason why I like the linking, whether it be through smell, through hearing, through, through feeling, whatever it may be, is because it, it really it, it attacks the subconscious. And the subconscious mm -hmm. for me is where if we can reprogram our patterns, because all we are is just patterns, if we can reprogram, rewire our patterns and we can do it subconsciously, now we've got a far greater way of being more successful because the consciousness is something that comes and goes, as you well know. You know, we, mm -hmm. we're conscious of the world and all of a sudden we wander off in our own little world. So the whole for me is, it, is if I can get someone to buy in into something that they used to enjoy and now they do it that still brings a smile to their face, well, subconsciously now I've probably got more of a success chance than just having a good thought. A good thought's important, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it's the hardest part is if I've got people thinking whilst they're exercising, a lot of times they're actually not feeling whilst they're exercising. 
So I don't, you know, I don't count reps. I'll put a clock on my phone and say, right, just do that for 60 seconds or do that for three minutes. Because I want them to feel, I want them to understand, I want them to just sense what's happening in those tissues. And it's interesting because, you know, I had a lady in this morning who was 75, 76, and she came in and said, oh, I felt it here and I felt it here and I felt it here. And I thought, perfect. There's your perfect assessment. Not me assessing, it's her assessing. And we do some stuff and we go, how's that feel? And she goes, oh, that's, that's changed. Perfect. So the beautiful thing is if we can empower our clients, they come to us with the answers already. All we've got to be able to do is understand that this is what that tissue may need. If we can do that, that builds relationships. Now it grows our businesses, which means now we've got longevity, we've got sustainability. More importantly, we're giving the quality of life to the people who deserve it. Fantastic. I love that. And that is such a powerful area to think about, you know, that conscious, subconscious brain and know how to tap into it. I mean, that is really the heart of motivation, isn't it? Making Tapping into that subconscious brain and directing that so that it drives you where you want to go. And that's probably another whole topic for another chat. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much, Ian, for your time today. Now, if people want to connect with you and find out more and perhaps tap into some of your resources, tell us where they can head to do that. They can go to either uh, feelsoma.com or odionmovement.com, both websites. Uh, Feelsoma is really what Rod and I are doing now. OD on Movement is my studio website, but there's information about Soma on both of those. Obviously, there's um, Facebook, you know, to war uh, on Facebook. Um, and you've got YouTube. There's lots of stuff on YouTube now that, uh, that we've done with movements and ideas and people using various types of tools. So um, I'm sure there'll be... There'll be um, links on on the uh, on the bio, so, so we'll get that, get it all done. There's no problems there. But um, look, there's an abundance. You know, I would always say, Lauren, if people want more, contact you because I love the fact that you're driving you're driving something now that is really a confusing area, and people are confused about lots of things. You're putting it into a position now that actually makes sense and that's really really important because if we look at it you know you look at us we're both health professionals how confusing is nutrition how confusing mm -hmm. is movement? how confusing yeah. is breathing you know all these things now because they're all unfortunately they get bastardized that people make it so complex that now the end user doesn't know whether they should or shouldn't so so movement now has become so confusing on how should i move Mm -hmm. So you know, thank you for you because you're always looking for these innovative and more simplistic ways in which we can actually give people what they need in a manner in which they can take a snack and just do a little bit and feel the outcome and that's going to give them a positive solution which is, which is just mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, I love it. It's like I one thing that's always stuck with me from being along to your sessions at conferences, Ian, is how you talk about subtle changes. And it's just amazing being in a room with you and seeing you teach and seeing you create those subtle changes in tissues and in bodies and in mindsets. It is incredible. So I highly recommend that people head over. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you head to thrivetvshow.com and come and click on this episode and all of the show notes will be down below or just right here on this page if you're already here. And you can link through and connect in with Ian and link into his YouTube channel and check out some more of his movement videos so you can get these ideas and, and apply them in your life and try them out have some fun. I used to sign one of my books always with, you know, with love from Lauren, remember to laugh. Play, laugh, play, smile, jump, run every day, you know, because I think we just need to bring more playfulness back into our lives. And that perhaps links into your earlier comments about find something you used to love to do and find a way to integrate it, even if it's in your workplace, in the middle of the day, if it's with your kids after school, if it's in the morning by yourself, just loosen up and let yourself move in a way that you enjoy. So powerful, so important. And, you know, it's if we could do that, we wouldn't have half the emotional, physical, mental or spiritual stresses that we have in our life. Mm, fantastic. So thank you so much, Ian, and thank you to everyone that has tuned in. This has been another great episode of Thrive TV. Make sure you do head over and check out the show notes, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to The Thrive TV Show with Lauren Parsons. Visit thrivetvshow.com to access the show notes and discover our fantastic bonus content. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next inspiring episode.